Hey everybody, Darren Boros here. Today I wanna to answer that age old question that's been on real estate investors' minds for many years. It's been up for debate over and over again, and that is, should I subscribe to Darren's YouTube channel? Which of course the answer is yes. But for real, the question is, should I hire a property manager or should I manage my properties myself? Here are the arguments for hiring a property manager, which I'm sure you've heard. Look, I don't wanna get that phone call at 3 a.m. for the leaky toilet or I can't scale my real estate investing business if I'm busy working as a property manager. Here are the arguments for managing your own property, which I'm sure you've heard as well. Nobody's gonna take care of my business like I do. I get to put my own tenants in place and I get to screen them. I get to save myself money. And look, I hired a property manager. They put terrible tenants in place. They had to be removed. They damaged the property. Now I gotta fix the property, fire my property manager and find new tenants. If you've heard any of these things, this video is for you. I'm gonna break down the pros and cons of both hiring a property manager and managing the property yourself. And if you wanna do either one of those things, I'm gonna give you some tips in order to be able to do that successfully. I also wanna give you a third option, which is a hybrid option of the two, which is a strategy that I use. I'm gonna break down the pros, the cons, and I also wanna give you some tips should you decide that that's the strategy that you wanna use moving forward. Before we get into it, if you don't mind, just hit that like button to satisfy the YouTube algorithm. You can also subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's get into it. Let's first talk about managing your own properties because I see a lot of investors wanting to do this, especially when investors are starting out. They're just getting involved in real estate investing. They often feel more comfortable if they're managing their own properties. The first disclaimer that I wanna put on this is if you don't live within 90 minutes of your property, I would strongly consider hiring a property manager. It's just too much time to travel back and forth for something as simple as showing the property to a new tenant. I'm not saying you can't manage your own properties, I'm just saying that it's a little bit more difficult if you live further away than if you live right around the corner. Here are some of the pros of managing your own property. The first thing is you're gonna learn how everything works because you have no choice. You're gonna have to learn how to write ads, you're gonna have to screen tenants, you're gonna have to manage your repair people coming in and out, you're gonna know all about the finances of the property. The other major component of managing your own properties is, and this one's a little bit up for debate, and that is you're gonna save yourself some money. Property management usually runs anywhere from six to 10% of the gross revenue that you bring in every single month. So if you're managing your own properties, you can pay yourself, essentially that's six or 10%, or you can actually take it as a savings. And the third pro of managing your own properties is that you're going to be in charge of the success of your business. And that's a big one for a lot of investors because they have a hard time relinquishing control to somebody else to be able to manage their business. Which leads me to the cons of managing your own property. The first con of managing your own property is you are gonna be the first and only line of defense against your tenants. Doesn't matter how you represent yourself, whether you're representing yourself as the owner or the property manager, you're gonna be the one dealing with all the calls, all the emails, and no matter what's going on in your life, you're going to have to deal with those situations. The second con to managing your own properties is it takes time. And as we all know, time is money. If all goes well, it will take you time to show the properties, collect the rent, pay the bills. If all doesn't go well, you'll have to deal with evictions, tenant damage, and getting the property up and running again for future tenants. All of this is going to take time. But having walked you through a few of the pros and cons of managing your own properties, I wanna give you a couple tips if you wanna be able to manage your own properties. The first tip is learn all the rules and regulations. Each province has a set of guidelines and rules that tenants and landlords have to follow. And you have to know those rules inside and out. Because if you get a bad tenant in your property, I guarantee they will know the rules and regulations. So it's really important that you know exactly what your rights are as a landlord and what you can and cannot do. There's a lot of misconception around on the rules and regulations of managing tenants. So I want you to take a little test for me if you wanna manage your own properties. You can write the answers in the comments section below. And here are the three questions I want you to answer. Question one, can you evict tenants in the middle of winter? Question two, can you ask someone how old they are on a rental application? Question three, can you evict tenants if they get a pet halfway through the tenancy and it's stipulated in your rental agreement that they can have pets. Answer those questions below, we'll see how you do and I'll respond to your answers. My second tip if you wanna manage your own properties is pay yourself as a property manager. It does two things. For one, it's a write-off against the property. You'll pay less tax on the revenue to bring in. The second thing is if and when you wanna hire a property manager to manage those properties for you, you're already used to paying out that, let's call it 10%, so it's not gonna affect your cash flow at all. <laughs> 
My third tip if you want to manage your own properties is use reciprocity. Reciprocity is the idea of giving and taking. So on the day that my tenants move into my properties without fail, I leave them on the kitchen countertop a card and a bottle of wine or a case of beer. And if they don't drink, well, then I don't rent to them. I'm kidding. Of course I rent to them. They're probably better tenants if they're not drinking all the time. Anyway, use reciprocity. Now, it's not going to solve all your problems, but here's what I do for my tenants. I give my tenants about $100 of gifts per tenant per property per year. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's built into my cash flow. It's part of my numbers. So there's an expectation that I'm going to use reciprocity with all my tenants. My fourth tip on managing your own properties, and this one's going to be a little controversial, I know, but make sure you do the rent increases, especially in a province like Ontario, where you're limited to whatever the inflation guideline is. So for 2020, you can only increase the rent 2.2%. That's the highest I've seen in many years, but make sure you give yourself a notification to be able to send that notice 90 days in advance of a rent increase. My fifth tip, if you wanna manage your own properties is never represent yourself as the owner. You're always the property manager. If for some reason your tenants find out that you're the owner, that's okay. I don't like to lie to my tenants, but I just tell them I'm one of the owners. And that way, if there's a decision that needs to be made, you can say, I need to check with the other owners. And that way you leave that level of separation between you and your tenants. But whenever you can, try to represent yourself as the property manager only. Okay, to the pros, cons, and tips for those of you that wanna hire a property manager. The pros, any good property management company should have systems in place already, such as accounting, tenant screening, and they should have relationships with local contractors. In some cases, property management companies may be able to get higher rents than what you may be able to get on the open market. They've got proven strategies when it comes to marketing and placing tenants in order to be able to get the highest rent possible. Another pro of hiring a property management company is that there's a level of separation between you and your tenants. There also may be increased liability protection because the property manager is acting on your behalf. And the final pro for hiring a property manager is that you can focus on what you do best. Maybe you don't like property management. Maybe it's not one of your strong suits. So choose what you do best as a real estate investor and let the pros do what they do. The cons of hiring a property management company. I don't care which property management company you're using. They're always going to be acting in their best interest. Their best interest may align with yours, but if it ever comes head to head, they're gonna choose their company's best interest over yours. Having said that, here's some tips for those of you that wanna hire property managers. Learn what they are responsible for and what you are responsible for. Every property management company operates slightly differently, so it's really important you understand what your responsibilities are and what theirs are. When at all possible, try to get a rental guarantee built into your contract. Now, not all property managers do this, but essentially what it is, is if a tenant signs a 12 month lease, for instance, and they leave early, the property manager is responsible for the lost revenue to you during the months that the property sits vacant. It's really good incentive for your property managers to put quality people in your units and try to keep them there for the entire length of their lease. I know this might be a tedious one, but you have to read that property management contract line for line. And if you don't wanna do it, hire a lawyer to review it for you. That contract is gonna stipulate what's included, what's not included. Perhaps some property management companies do a la carte services, and some of them will actually handle all of your accounting. So they would collect the rent, they would pay your mortgage, they would pay your utility bills, and they would essentially send you positive cash flow that's left over after that. And my last tip when it comes to hiring property managers is make sure that they have a digital system of some sort. Something that you can log into a portal and see what's going on from an accounting perspective, see where all of your tenants are, where their leases are, and you can do that all remotely from a web browser anytime you have an internet connection. The other option is the hybrid option, which essentially combines managing the property yourself and hiring a property manager. One of the reasons I like this option is because you get to hire somebody locally and they can manage the day-to-day -day operations of the property and you can work remotely and still have control over your business. There's always people looking for a little bit of extra part-time work. This could be retirees, this could be stay-at-home parents. They don't necessarily want a full-time job, but they wouldn't mind having something else to be able to dedicate their time to. So you can hire them and teach them exactly the way that you want them to run your business. The other nice thing about this option is you get to set the rates with the person that you hire. Some people may prefer an hour hourly wage, whereas others might prefer that 10% of the gross revenue that you bring in every single month. And it's really up to you and the person that you hire as to which system you want to work under. One of the systems that I use is a flat rate system. So I pay my property manager 10% of the gross revenue that's brought in every month. And whether they work five hours a month or whether they work 50 hours a month, it's the same flat rate. My property manager prefers that because instead of a lower base rate and add-on services, 
they're always going to make the same amount of money. It's also great for me in terms of budgeting because I know that it's a flat rate based on the gross revenue that's brought in every single month. You can set up this system whatever way you want and customize it accordingly. When I first started with this system, I was writing the rental ads. I was responding to the initial emails that came in. I would jump on a phone call with the prospective tenant and do a little bit of a phone interview. And then I would decide if I wanted them to see the property or not. If I did, I would coordinate with the property management in my local city. This saved a lot of time for my property manager because essentially I was pre-screening all of my tenants. And especially if you're on an hourly rate, this can be hugely beneficial. My property manager would then meet them at the property, show them around, ask them some basic questions, and essentially report back to me on which tenants they liked the best. And then between the information that I'd gathered and they'd gathered, I'd make a decision on who I wanted to put into the property. Because I've got somebody locally, they do all the move in and move out inspections. They can also coordinate with local tradespeople coming in out of the property. And ultimately they could represent you at the landlord and tenant board if it actually comes to that. Thankfully, I have not had to deal with that situation, but inevitably it is going to happen and you can make the decision on whether you want to represent yourself or whether you want to have your property manager go and attend that session for you. Here are some of the pros of the hybrid option. You get to control a lot more of the process. You still get to be in control of your business, but you've got a local person on the ground coordinating as necessary. You also get to teach somebody exactly how you want them to run your business. You're not hiring a property management company that does things the way that they want to do them. You can actually teach someone exactly the way that you want them to operate. Another pro of the hybrid system is you get to manage all the finances and see exactly what's going on in your business on a regular basis. The cons of the hybrid system are you may have turnover at some point. Somebody may stay with you six months or six years, but eventually they may leave. And at that point, you'd have to hire somebody new and train them exactly the way that you want them to operate. The other con to the hybrid system is you're still gonna be managing a lot of the day-to-day -day responsibilities. So you're still gonna be overseeing everything and it's going to take up some of your time. You also eliminate a little bit of that third party liability protection because essentially you're gonna be the one on the lease. You're gonna be the one dealing with the tenants in the beginning. So you're gonna be responsible if something does go wrong to have to remedy that situation. Here are my tips if you wanna use the hybrid system. My first tip for the hybrid system system is set up your systems and make sure your property managers are following your systems to a T. For instance, when they're showing properties, I want them to arrive early, open up the windows, let some air flow into the property, bring some bottled water for people, have the rental applications there, and always schedule your appointments 15 minutes apart. That way somebody's arriving and somebody else is still in the property. It will create some urgency and some buzz around the property and ultimately people will feel like they need to make a quick decision on whether or not they wanna rent that property from you. My second tip is in the beginning when you're first hiring property managers to operate your business, you're gonna to have to review everything. Make sure that every document that gets sent out is reviewed by you first. My third tip is hire somebody great and treat them well. Take your time when you're hiring somebody because if you get the right fit, they can be a great person to add to your system for many, many years. My fourth tip is once you start to feel comfortable with that person understanding your systems, start to hand over more responsibilities. That will allow you to remove yourself from certain responsibilities and your property manager can take on more over time. Ultimately, they'll start to take on more of your business. They'll feel a certain ownership with the success of your business and that's a win-win for everybody. If you like that hybrid option, go ahead, smash that like button. You can also subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram. You can find me at darrenvoros.com. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon.